Hello, good afternoon to you. Uh, if Sajid Javid's first job is to get a grip of the Windrush scandal without delay, what will that look like? He says that the government is working already on its plans for compensation um, and it will be overseen by someone outside of government. So that's a good start, I guess. But it isn't uh, the cleaning up of the mess overall, is it? Uh, he couldn't say uh, whether MPs... Um, uh, two MPs, sorry, whether the Home Office had carried out any deportations, despite despite plenty of MPs saying that they're hearing those stories in their own constituencies. Um, but I ask you, what is being refused entry to your own country, if not deportation? What is losing your right to a job, a home and benefits inside your own country, completely wrongfully, if not a kind of internal deportation? Do you have confidence that this Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, will do any better than the last one. Or indeed, the one before her. 0345 606 is the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC. This is what Sajid Javid said um, yesterday uh, during that urgent question on Windrush just after four o'clock when he was asked about deportations by the Labour backbencher who we'd spoken to earlier on, Stephen Doughty. And I say to the new Home Secretary that it's not, as he said, that this could be happening to members wider than the Windrush generation. It is happening to members wider than the Windrush generation. And it's happening because of the hostile environment policy, the cuts and pressures in his department, the cuts to legal aid, discretion and appeals. Now, can he tell me how many people is his department aware of that have been wrongfully deported or detained? And in the midst of the discussions last week, we were told that the Home Office was going to scrap the net removal target that's been at the heart of this argument. Will he now commit to removing it? You, uh, Mr Speaker, the, you, first of all, if the Honourable Gentleman has any cases of uh, other people affected that he thinks my department may not be aware of, please do uh, make me uh, aware. And uh, he asked me about, uh, am I aware of any cases of uh, wrongful uh, deportation? I am not currently aware of any cases of uh, wrongful uh, deportation. Well, two weeks ago, during Prime Minister's questions, Theresa May spoke, you might remember this, to reassure those concerned about the Windrush scandal. People in the Windrush generation who came here from Commonwealth countries have built a life here. They've made a massive contribution to the country. These people are British. They are part of us. She's said that quite a lot, hasn't she, since then? But if they're British and if they're part of us um, and if there is no evidence, according to Sajid Javid and his predecessor, uh, of wrongful deportations, where does that leave the people we've been hearing from over the last three weeks who say that they have letters threatening them with deportation? They have family that went to Jamaica, for example, for a holiday or for a funeral or a wedding and can't get back into the country. What is that if not an illegal, a wrongful, an unlawful deportation. It, 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 my concern amid all of the promising stuff that Sajid Javid said, uh, said yesterday, not least on uh, looking again at cuts to appeals, looking again at legal aid for people from the Windrush generation. Um, uh, th there was definitely some positives in there, but my concern is uh, that people are perhaps relaxing a bit too soon on the question of the rights, the pre-existing rights of these people. Um, if you haven't yet got the right to get a house, if you haven't yet got the right to get a job or benefits because you were forced to lose your job because of the Windrush scandal, then your help hasn't arrived yet, has it? Um, I wonder how long it will take. 03456060973. If you're directly affected, it's always really good to hear from you on this. Um, uh, if not just your thoughts on whether Sajid Javid, given how passionately he spoke about his own family and how it could have been him, it could have been them that this happened to. And it hasn't only happened to um, people from uh, the, the Caribbean. I've had many calls from um, Commonwealth citizens to whom this has happened as well. Do you have confidence that Sajid Javid will indeed tackle this differently and reject the hostile environment approach and properly represent and quickly represent the Windrush uh, citizens. 0345 606 the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC. Uh, Jan Durfel joins me, immigration barrister, a specialist in asylum, immigration and human rights law. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. It, it, I suppose in pure legal terms, it's probably a bit of a stretch to describe somebody as internally deported. But the experience of these people borders on that, doesn't it? 
Absolutely. And I mean, I think we mustn't forget that the whole point of the hostile environment is to force people out. So otherwise, you would just let them sort out their legal affairs, etc. But the moment you tell people that they actually cannot stay in rented accommodation or cannot rent any new rented accommodation, that they cannot hold down a job, do not have access to benefits, may lose their driver's license, can be detained, you are telling them you cannot remain. And you're telling them you will have to leave the country because you can't afford to remain or we will actually remove you. So to narrow it down really to removals or deportations is a red herring because the whole point is the hostile environment. So the government wants to get people to remove themselves and um, only those that, and many will have left and the government will have had no figures whatsoever of those who could not stand it anymore, who do not have friends who might put them up or, or family who can feed them, etc. Because it's, a, a, it's an unacceptable situation to put people through this hostile or rebranded compliant environment. The fact is the same and the measures are all still in place. So it's just lip service to say you will change it because we will no longer penalize the wrong people. So, it is actually the environment that so is uh, let, let, uh, unsupportable. Let me talk a little about the difference between hostile and compliant because that struck me as interesting yesterday. From your position, do you have evidence that people have actually been compliant in this hostile environment and, quotes, chosen to go back because of the threats they were facing? Um, I think I, I might have had a, a couple of clients, but then, of course, people come to me when they want to fight their case. So there will be many people who, when faced with the situation, will feel that they cannot stand the pressure and will not fight because they have been forced out of their homes, because they have nowhere to stay. They might have become street homeless. They don't have a job. They've lost it. So in a way, you're, you're narrowing down the access that these people may have to sort out their situation. So they were stripped of their statehood, essentially. Well, effectively, I mean, in a way, if you were properly stateless, you would probably have additional access to um, rights to stay and, and, and British citizenship. But these are people who may not have all the documents showing that they've been here since 73. And the government themselves has admitted that they have destroyed the boarding passes and boarding cards, landing cards, etc. So they're effectively removing the owners and they are saying to everyone, well, you will just have to prove it. So, of course, the government is saying, well, we wouldn't ever unlawfully remove anyone. But as you say, if people go to the tribunal and 40 to 50 percent win their cases, it clearly shows that the government has been wrong in 40 to 50 percent of the cases. But these are the people who've decided to fight it. There will have been many who were unlawfully put in that situation and they left the country, or many who may still be in that situation, but um, haven't yet been forced out, but again, do not know where to start to remedy it. Well, on the question of, remedy, of a remedy for this, what I don't particularly understand is why those people who have been engaging with the Home Office for years on this issue and, and insisting that they are British citizens and being told no, what I don't understand, given how much paperwork must, much exist, much, must already exist because of that engagement, why, why a kind of pro forma letter can't just be written about those people signed by the Home Secretary and they can show it to any employer, they can show it to any landlord, they can get any benefits um, that, that, that are due to them. Um, why can't that happen quickly? Because that, that should only take a week, it seems to me. Well, you're absolutely right. And in fact, rather than taking that approach, and that's what should be happening, as you say, it's the government authorities that hold the record, often of tax payments, uh, you know, they, they, they can establish, they have contacts with the HMRC, but usually only to prove the opposite, that someone may not have paid tax and should then leave. But rather than seeing this person has been around, rather than putting the onus on, on the person himself to bring all these documents, the government should be saying, we, in our own documents, have proof. So rather than waiting for the client to write to them, they should be writing to them, as you rightly say, um, but, but what's effectively happening, the government is trying to restrict it in the Data Protection Act. It's trying to put 
restrict people's access to their own immigration records. So whilst this debate is going on, the government is pushing an exemption through the Data Protection Act to prevent immigration immigrants from accessing all those documents held by the government. So they're doing exactly the opposite. But the, 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 That's immigrants you're talking about. Does that still take in Windrush citizens? Indeed. It would be everyone. They're trying to have an exemption for everyone who's undergoing immigration proceedings, meaning... Rightly or wrongly. Exactly. Exactly. So when the government actually contests that you don't have a right to be here, and they will do that, but that's the starting point and it's for you then to prove it, then you're falling under that. But will they still do that about Windrush citizens? Indeed. Indeed. How how do you know? Well, because it affects anyone um, who's not a British citizen, and Windrush nationals wouldn't be British citizens unless they have applied for naturalisation. There would be people uh, who aren't subject to immigration well hang control. on hang on but the but this is the problem this is the, the, this is the the uh, imbalance between what what is said in the house of commons by the prime minister and the reality of people's paperwork Th- that's what i'm that's confused right. about because the prime minister has said these people are citizens you say actually as far as she's concerned no they're not well it is always the onus is always on the applicant really and as you say i think it is that onus that should be redressed it is really the state that should write to anyone saying you know re, re um, with reference to uh, boarding cards landing cards or other home office records to say well actually we have reason to believe that you have a right to be here and of course that's a major 180% change in, in, in thinking because what the Home Office does at the moment is they have a refusal culture and anyone who writes, unless they can be, unless they prove the absolute opposite, the assumption will be that they have no right to be here. And that is actually part of the hostile environment. So when civil servants are blamed for having refused people, well, no, that's exactly what they expected to do. Okay, thank you very much, Jan Durfel, immigration barrister specialising in asylum, immigration and human rights law.